Well, the Wisconsin Badgers fall 35-31 to against LSU. As you guys can see, I'm not at the bowl game, but watched it. It was a tough one, obviously, for Wisconsin, but an intriguing way to end the season. We'll talk specifically about the game, and then we'll look forward to 2024 as well. I mean, the Badgers started off this game strong. Gotta start with Tanner Mordecai. This was an amazing game from him. Uh, the reason the Badgers were in this game was because of Tanner Mordecai. I mean, Luke Fickle talked very, very effusively with praise about Tanner Mordecai after the game. And I think that he's he's a guy who just showed he can be a competitor and a guy who I was high on coming into the year. I thought he should have entered the draft last year. But, I mean, regardless, Wisconsin got him. He ended up being a very solid option as a competitor for this team, a leader. And he showcased that against a tough LSU opponent, 378 yards, 67.5% completion rate, three touchdowns, a, a huge performance from him. And the receivers, I mean, Will Pauling, 143 yards. Bryson Green, 105 yards. Really like Will Pauling from day one of spring ball. Bryson Green was a guy who I thought was going to make a big impact in 2023. I was high on him. I didn't like the way they necessarily utilized him for the full portion of the year, but he's been making big plays, and that's the thing that you really brought him along to do, to make big plays. He made a few of those today, seven catches, 105 yards at the end of the day. I thought the way the Badgers used, uh, utilized the pass game was amazing in this game. They they completed passes to all three levels of the field and were consistently looking to you know target all three levels of the field, keeping LSU on their toes. That opened up a lot of the checkdowns that they were able to get or a lot of those you know curl routes, seven, eight yard kind of plays that they were able to get as well. I thought Phil Longo called a pretty good game for the most part. Now, the bad, I thought some of the coaching decisions were kind of questionable. I mean, I think the Badgers punted twice near midfield on fourth and short. And a couple of them, you know, you're, you're questioning, especially when you look at the analytics, they are potentially telling you to go for it. But I thought there was also a bit of a disconnect between the offensive coordinator and the head coach in this one. I mean, first of all, early on, you, the, I think the biggest one, fourth and four, you have the field goal opportunity. Analytics tell you to go for it. The batters don't. And they badly miss that 50-yard field goal. Later on, though, I think the big one I'm talking about is at the end of the game, in the, in the in the fourth quarter, when you have third and four, third and six, Jackson Aker runs for a few yards, ends up being fourth and two. A run on third down kind of signifies you're willing to go for it on fourth down. I know it was near midfield, but it seemed like the Badgers were going to be aggressive, go for it. But after deliberation, you know, you ran the football on third down and then you punt on fourth down. With the way the pass game was going, if you were going to punt for it on fourth down, didn't know that was the best decision, but if you weren't, I mean, there's a disconnect, you know, a little bit there. The other main opportunity was uh, obviously in the red zone. You have first and goal at the one yard line. weren't able to convert, have to kick a 21 yard field goal on fourth and goal at the three after not being able to convert. You only threw the ball. You didn't throw the ball on that drive. I mean, Mordecai had an opportunity on first down, was sacked, and then you ran it twice. So a couple of questionable ones. I think there's a lot to kind of work on in terms of decision-making, specifically the punting and field goal decision-making next year. I think that's something Fickle will kind of look around, evaluate, and talk about. But there's a lot of optimism going into 2024. I pointed out the receivers. This is a receiver core that's coming back. Pauling, Green, and then another guy, Tretch Kekahuna. Four catches, 64 yards. He's a guy who's going to play a lot in his sophomore year. A couple of, you know, you'll see those uh, multi-slot receiver sets. I think that that's something that's going to be in fashion. And I think this Badgers team has optimism coming into 2024. I mean, you might see a couple of new faces defensively, a couple of guys going out, defensive line. That probably needs to be figured out a little bit. But this is a team that I think is coming off uh, or coming out of 23 on some really high momentum into 24, hopefully, with a better result. But you're also facing much tougher competition. Going to be excited. Stay tuned, though for the coverage throughout the offseason, through spring ball, and also through the 2024 season. Wanted to, though, wish everyone a happy new year. Hope everyone's spending time with their family, having a good time around the holidays, and we will be, you know, providing y'all with content throughout. Thank you guys, and we'll see you guys next time.